everyone. Um, I think we will uh, start on the next segment of our um, uh, live chat and we are really very excited today um, to actually welcome our parents uh, in this particular live chat, right? Uh, we have parents uh, who um, have children from year one all the way to year six over here. Um, and we are very, very thankful that they are taking the time to uh, share about their experiences um, over here, right? So we have uh, uh, Dr. Helena Lee, who is the uh, uh, chairperson of our uh, parent support group for this year, right? Uh, we also have Ms. Ritu, uh, Mrs. Go, uh, Mrs. Kausa, and Dr. Chin Li Xiong, right? So we have uh, actually five parents with us. Um, yeah, so um, I think without much further ado, I think I'm going to invite um, uh, uh, Dr. Helena Lee to actually come on board and actually uh, introduce herself and share a little bit first. Yeah, Helena, thank you so much. Yes, uh, good morning and um, it's a pleasure to be here with um, my fellow parents. Um, may I introduce them again? Um, there is Dr. Chin Wee Shang who has a daughter in year three. Um, we also have uh, Mrs. Go Kirkun. She has a son in year one, as well as a daughter in year three. And there's uh, Miss Ritu Sexaria, who has one boy in year six and a girl in year three. So as you can see that we already have um, three mothers of girls in our panel. We also have Mrs. Kausa Karimi. Her son is in year four. Um, I am the mother of a year five boy. Um, we are happy to be on this panel because we know that parents have a lot of concerns about um, their children, about what life is like in this very unusual school. And uh, we hope to be able to answer as many of your questions as possible. Um, Ms. Chong, is there any question you'd like us to start on first? Uh, yeah. Okay, I think perhaps, um, I think the the, the big question, I think that uh, there are two questions. Um, I think that a lot of um, um, uh, uh, parents are quite eager to find out more about. Firstly, whether or not, um, how did you decide or how did you help work with your child to decide um, if NUS High was an option to take on, especially that uh, DS, it is 100% DSA. Um, that's one. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe any of the parents can can share their experiences. Um, yeah, before you actually embarked on NUS High journey, what made you decide to actually, uh, you know, actually put down NUS High as one of the three DSA options? Yeah. Uh, may I direct that question to Kauza? Kauza, would you like to share how your son actually made the decision, or how did your family make the decision with him? Um, hi everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, uh, uh, for us, it was like, you know, um, my older one is in Raffles. She went for Raffles. So my son was not an all rounder like her and uh, she was actually rejected by NUS. So she was very disappointed. Uh, but then um, uh, but then when it came to my uh, came to my son's turn, um, the school, the school encouraged us that you know he is a more of a math and science person um, he he was the one who was answering questions he was solving um, math questions before the teachers and in fact uh, one of the teachers said he actually corrected us uh, in an examination paper and that is why she encouraged us to go for nus and uh, in that year about 30 people from uh, so my son is from a local uh, from a neighborhood school that is Nyongkatong primary school and um, so we were very uh, encouraged by that and uh, 30 of his friends you know they they applied and it was like a, a great big thing for us that you know so many uh, kids are applying for NUS and uh, it was it, it was a great experience so it was like because the teachers told us and uh, the teachers encouraged us and the teachers encouraged him uh, that we all went for it so that was our journey into trying into nus and ritu was um, one of our alumni parents and she was the one who was like you know giving us all the tidbits what is required how to go about it and uh, so it was a very nice and smooth journey for us thank you 
Thank you, Councillor. Um, I would also like to direct that same question to a mother of a girl. Um, Wishon, your daughter is in year three. Maybe your memory would be a bit clearer as to you know, how she came about to um, select NUS High. Okay. 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 Uh, I know NUS High for many years because I actually teach in NUS and was involved in a sense when the, the school was founded. And also my son was from NUS High and he graduated, he's now in Cambridge. So when it comes to my girl's turn, my second one actually is in uh, reference. Uh, that's his choice. And we usually give them the choice. <laughs> so when it comes to my girl's turn, it was like between, because of course she, she can't go to Hua Chong, she can't go to reference the, the, I mean the, 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 the RI. So the only either girl school or it's a, it's a co ex school, you know, and it's high. So, she was uh, making decision. I told her you you put down in your list, you know, what you like about this school, what you like about that school, and then she, she listed down all things. So there was still one point which she was uh, hesitating was, does NUS High give me a holistic, you know, uh, uh, all-rounded sort of education also in the humanities side? Because as a girl, she does have that kind of flair in, in terms of uh, English literature and creative writing. So I said, go ahead to read up the whole stack of you know uh, curriculum and he actually she actually does that she compared it side by side the reference girl school and uh, and yes high school of course the sort of title you know of these humanities some of them are not listed as a subject in any high school but she realized that it's actually embedded in the whole curriculum so i said see i told you it's okay you know and, and, and it's actually all around that it's not just maths and science so so she made the decision uh, it, it was difficult for her probably at that stage, but uh, she finally made the decision and she tell us that, OK, I will go for NS High School. <laughs> and that, I'm not very sure whether my big boy gave her a bit of influence, but uh, probably, <laughs> but, but that was the decision, not, not my decision. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a very good point. I think a lot of parents will probably share that um, the decision for their children to select uh, NUS High School was pretty much the child's decision. The parents actually were just uh, behind them, supporting them. Uh, parents are the ones who are actually more worried. I wonder, um, for example, if we ask uh, year six parents whether they can uh, remember um, six years ago, <laughs> the school was um, even younger. I think um, our fear was probably even greater that this was an untried school. Um, is there anything that uh, Kakun could help us because your daughter is already in year six? Kakun, are you there? Muted, muted. Okay, hi. Uh, okay. Can you hear? Uh, all right. Hi, uh, I'm uh, Hikun from uh, the, with the two kids, uh, uh, year one and year six. Um, I think the getting into NUS High uh, wasn't an easy uh, task. Okay, uh, but we went to the open house, very fortunate at you know, a few years ago, uh, the open house is always there. So we are very impressed by the open house uh, event even at that time uh, with the hands-on uh, experimental and the school facilities. And there were a lot of demos around by the students. It's very focused. So um, I think the, the my first kid, uh, uh, a girl, she, she, she is very happy uh, uh, to be doing all these things uh, at the open house. Yeah, so I think after that, we found out more about the curriculum because it's a, a very new thing for us besides the IP school. Uh, and uh, we realized that it's a, it's a good option. So so she, she submitted DSA uh, for three school. Yeah, yes. And, and she, she eventually chose the NUS high, yeah. Yes, uh, we know that your daughter has many, many interests, uh, you know, beyond academics. Um, would you be able to share that, you know, has she been able to uh, continue with those interests, even with a heavy uh, workload? Um, she has a wide variety of interests. Uh, so one of her passion was music. Uh, and uh, even though she does not pick the music curriculum, but there is actually many chances to, uh, to participate and also to opportunities given to her uh, in her CCA uh, school orchestra, including string ensemble, 
and also uh, with the music, uh, uh, how to say, all those out outreach programs and things like that. So, so she's able to develop herself both in, in school uh, and externally. She also can carry on her uh, music learning uh, for uh, violin and singing. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we similarly have a mother here with uh, one boy and one girl in the school. I mean, that's quite wonderful. Ritu, you have a year six son and a year three daughter. Is there anything you'd like to share about, I mean, we don't like to compare our children, but you would you say, you know, there's a comparison of uh, similarities and differences in the way they've um, approached um, school life at NUS High? Ritu, you're on. Both my children are very different in their personalities and their interests. Um, for my boy, it was it is quite straightforward. He is uh, he sleeps, eats, drinks, math and science. But for my girl, she has a, a more varied interests. Uh, she plays netball, and she did that in primary school. Uh, she had a lot of interest in art. So when uh, and then she had a lot of interest in math before she. Uh, joined NUS High, her exposure was primarily with math. Uh, so she loved math, but after coming to NUS High, she has uh, uh, got the exposure to sciences, so she is leaning more towards sciences now, although she still loves math, but then she's getting interested in sciences as well. So uh, they have approached it in uh, NUS High is, I would say, a school which allows a child to grow uh, at wish they like. It gives them the opportunity to explore themselves and then identify for themselves the areas they want to grow in. Uh, for example, for my boy, he has explored all Olympiads in the school when he was in year one, year two. Uh, and then eventually by year four, he figured out, OK, these the physics Olympiad is the one I want to go in and physics is my my area. And for my girl, she is uh, because her interests are different. So she is getting opportunities in those areas. She is in the netball CCA. Then she has taken arts as her uh, one of her subjects. So she is exploring those areas. So NUS High at the school has given her the, ex, uh, the, the opportunity and the, the curriculum is so flexible and uh, I would say all rounded in terms of the exposure. So the child can actually uh, at various stages of their school life, of their high school life, they can uh, uh, see, okay, th this is what I want to do now. Can I try this? And then uh, there are stages where, okay, now I probably want to try something else so they can, you know, eventually go and try another subject. If, if for example, now she has got art, but then if she wants to make a choice, she has to make a choice between, you know, arts and sciences at a later point. Uh, so she has that flexibility to choose, but at the same time, she can still continue her art with the CCA or the media club, things like that. So I say that for both my children, they have gotten the opportunities in their areas of strength. And the school has the the curriculum has allowed for that space to explore in their areas of strength. So yeah, both of them have got their uh, their areas in the school itself, though their personalities and their interests are quite different. That's very good, um, Ritu. Um, we actually, you know, expanding of what Ritu may have already said, there's a question here to say that how did you encourage your children to participate in programs or did you let them make their own um, decisions? I, I I would like to extend that question to Rishong, um, knowing that your daughter actually has um, many interests, um, but also to expand on what Ritu may have said that the child can actually try, you know, for example, in physics, you know, as your daughter had me, and then to actually say, I'll put that aside and, you know, uh, move on to another area that, you know, she's interested in. Would we Shang like to expand on that, please? Sure, yeah, I I would certainly uh, echo what uh, Ritu say. I think uh, a very important part of the education at this stage is really for them to explore their interests. And I think 
every children have some potential. So if you give them that space and uh, the curriculum has that flexibility, I think they will strive. In. And the other thing which I sort of uh, want to highlight also, I think the NUS High School is it's a small school in a sense that the 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 community is kind of uh, they know each other and uh, we do see uh, a teacher actually contacting me you know to 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 discuss about the daughter's uh, uh, choices sometimes you know if uh, should, should we encourage her to do that or that but of course we always sort of uh, explain the the situation and explain the pros and cons and then uh, she will make the decision i think i think the uh, she 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 i think she enjoyed she has been uh, quite active in at, at the beginning physics and then now she is of course year three already need to decide on a major and uh, she has uh, been doing computer cs which is a very unique subject i think in NUS high because uh, my boy in Raffles was uh, didn't get into that program in a very small group, so she has got uh, some experience in coding and all those. And uh, then she comes to a decision of whether I should still continue with this as a major or not. I'd say I would tell her, you know, you 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 make your own decision, but you explore it further one more semester, try it out and decide. I think. I think that is the important part of this whole uh, the, the school. The motto is really to explore. And I think uh, echo what Rito said just now also, it is, it's good for them to try things now. If they make a mistake, why not? You know, it's okay. Try one semester. If it's not possible, change it. I think it's still good. Uh, they, they have a feel of how things are. I think that kind of experience are important. And uh, especially important now because the world is so uncertain out there and we always hope that our kids are well equipped you know to face the uncertainty so i think all this you know uh, letting them explore in the more comfort space in the sense in school uh, will help to develop that resilience i think uh, uh, in them so i hope i answered your question <laughs> Helena. yeah thank you so <laughs> thanks you know um you know we we, we parents are, are you know um we may or may not be familiar with each other, but somehow the experiences that you have all shared um, seems to echo with each of us because we actually see it in our children. For example, we shall mentioned um, coding. And yes, uh, I think uh, Kauza, you would say your son is doing CS. He's now in year four. And, um, you know, would you like to share like how he, you know, how he progressed? I mean, everybody did yeah, coding in year one, year two, but how did he progress to select that? Because um, people who are looking at this school will wonder what is unique? Is there uh, something Council would like to say to us now? Yeah, hi. Um, the coding was introduced to him in year one and um, slowly, but like, you know, initially when he joined, it was all math. Uh, I, I want to do math, I want to do math, and it was only math. And then he was introduced to science and, uh, and then computer science. And then he found that very challenging he he joined this uh, uh, app uh, app venture. Uh, this is somewhere uh, something like you know where where they make apps and uh, do more of coding. And he was introduced to like-minded people. And I think that uh, that initiated that interest. And that is why he is going now further. Now most of the things I don't understand. And he actually offered me you know this holidays. He said, can I teach you coding? because this is one of the things that you can learn. And I'm like, what will I do with that? <laughs> so he said, you can make apps and games. And I'm like, why? You are there for that. <laughs> but but this is this is like the encouraging thing that he's ready to teach me. He's ready to um, he's ready to explore that like, OK, mommy can be taught, you know, so that is the fun part. I think, you know, that that gets me excited looking at him getting excited. So that that is that is what I want to share. I, I think that's true because I think uh, some of the year ones in previous years before the pandemic, they could they had a day where they could bring their parents to school. And I think probably one of the activity was teaching their parents to code. Is that true? Kausa? I, I I don't have any idea about that. I, I think it was before me probably, but I don't know. No, he never took me to <laughs> teach coding <laughs> because um, I think um, um, uh, the other part is that you know he he actually taught some th some things to my daughter 
um, uh, my older one, but um, and she 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 takes his help. Uh, for some simple Excel programs and all that. She takes like help. And then my husband is also into engineering computers. So both of them like, you know, they try to teach all of us in the family. So <laughs> that is that is our that is our thing. So the fun thing is that the family actually gets involved in the child's life in school, which really is a thing that makes it very exciting that so we're actually connecting with our teenagers. It's all coding and computers and, you know, all technical things. Like sometimes I, I, I try to bring back the conversation to something more this thing, but it always ends up with technical things. So <laughs> it's that. that. That's great. You know, I, I would also like to turn to Kikun at this moment because you have a son who is in year one and this brings it closest to what parents out there are asking now, like, you know, um, how has your child settled in stress in school, adjusting to um, a new school and new life? Would you like to share Kikun? Uh, we, we have a uh, cocoon with us. Yes. Yeah. OK, um, uh, seeing my son uh, in school year one uh, is actually more uh, worrying for me uh, because, you know, differences between daughters and son is very apparent. OK, uh, she uh, my daughter is very independent and most of the time she make her own decisions. So she will take opportunities, sign up and do all those things. But for my son, uh, he needs to be watched over. So I was pretty worried uh, that he might not be able to cope with number one, the long school hours. And number two is uh, uh, handing in homework. These are the two concerns, right? And uh, doing his work. Uh, but after one semester, uh, I realized that um, given the passion and the interest and the varied uh, activities that they are supposed to do the work, uh, he actually has no, no problem submitting the works. Yeah, which is something that uh, I wouldn't think of uh, because of the motivation. Uh, of course, certain subjects uh, uh, he may not be interested, but he will still be able to do it. So, so, so the, the main thing is uh, that he he himself uh, chose the school uh, and he knows what the school offers for him. So in order to stay you know, uh, given the opportunity to study more things and to learn more things, he, he knows that he, he need to maintain uh, a certain uh, uh, you know, uh, amount of uh, uh, standard like, basically. And another thing about uh, the school will be um, with the results, I do not have to worry. Uh, because there is no uh, curve in that sense. It's actually you get absolute result of what you know and what you write in the exam. I think that has worked very well with my uh, year six daughter. And then um, with the son, it will also work very well. <laughs> she didn't do very well for PSL, you know. <laughs> so so that was uh, a very, I mean, yeah, I think that, that, that really uh, puts me up. And the school is, uh, the teachers are very supportive. Um, of the underlying potentials of every child uh, in the in the school, and uh, they really go all out to develop them in all areas. Yeah, that's, that's what I, I have. I think that was uh, very nice because in one way you may already partially have answered one of the question here, which is what is one thing from parents point of view that is good about uh, NUS High? And I mean, like, you know, um, without being shy, you said didn't do too well for PSLE, but really all of us will say the children who come here are not necessarily those who do well in primary school and score all the A stars. Um, but the point that sets them apart, I feel, is that our students tend to show that they have a passion. Some of them in uh, many fields, for example, we, we Sean would have said, but others um, would be, you know, that they have something very specific, like uh, Ritu, you said, you know, by the time they, they move up to year three or year four, they really show that they have a passion in something. So for those who have widespread interests, I think there, there are many, areas for them to explore. But for those who have some very specific interest um, to go in depth, that is one very important thing that is unique about NUS High because the depth they can go into is, um, is really beyond any other school. I mean, let's admit it that in any other school, they would finally, no matter how talented or smart the child is, they will finally have a sit for the A levels or the IB like any other student in Singapore. But in NUS High, because the curriculum is literally created by the school, it's um, 
you know, and it's uh, tailored such that um, if the children are just good in one very particular field, math, physics, could be biology or anything, they really can go in depth and the ability and the opportunity to um, read up, to read undergraduate modules at NUS is I think the biggest plus point because um, it really shows that our curriculum has prepared them so well that they actually go on to do very well um, even when they're about year five or year six um, in NUS. I think um, is uh, Ritu may want to say something about that, that your year six son has probably already uh, done some of these uh, NUS modules. Ritu, your, your yeah, mic is muted. Uh, sorry, uh, it's a bit. OK, um, my son uh, was, uh, by the time he was in year five, towards the end, he start, sort of started deciding what he wants to do. Uh, though there were still some questions in his mind if he wants to go into pure sciences and pursue physics, or he can he should go to engineering where it is more applied sciences. Uh, and and uh, he in year six he got uh, in year five I think yeah it starts in year five in year five he got this opportunity to explore uh, both the options when uh, he could take the module at NUS he could either go for pure physics or he could explore engineering. So he decided to explore engineering because he already had a flavor of physics at school with the honors module and uh, the uh, and Olympiads that he was interested in. So he decided to try out engineering at NUS. So he is to, he took up mechanical engineering module for NUS. So uh, I would say that this actually has helped him uh, uh, explore and make that choice before he actually apply to the universities and the course. Uh, the school is because it is like how Helena said earlier, it's not bound by A level and IB. So the children don't really sort of get pushed, pulled back. In terms of their uh, capabilities, they if they ha if they want to explore, they can go beyond that boundary of uh, of curriculum or of an exam to find out more of what they're interested uh, of what they want to do later on so i would say that this school the uh, nus high school probably is the only school in singapore that gives that flexibility and the opportunity for the students to go all out and explore and find out that would help him make a very informed choice when he goes for universities and he applies for universities, which probably the other students doing A level or IB might not, though they might be deserving of it, but they might not be able to get it because they are busy preparing for the exam, which bounds them. Yeah, but that's very good, Ritu. Um, you know, we we this conversation can go on forever because you know one parent will lead to another parent. Um, we know, for example, like this is one school where um, just about the only school where um the students can take all three sciences, a math and all three sciences. Um, you know, for example, uh, Kirkun, you might want to share your daughter takes um, is that triple science with math. And is that uh, with honors? Um, I, I can't remember which honors subjects, but the um, the extents that our our students can uh, can can continue in their passion. Would you like to um, would you like to share on that, please, Kakun? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, my daughter has done very well. Uh, so she does three majors: uh, chemistry, physics, science. Bio. <laughs> chemistry, physics, bio, and uh, mathematics, right as well. And she did honors uh, for physics. Uh, she's just beside me because uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes the details is very hard to remember. So uh, and she did honors in physics and biology. It's a choice. And also um, that, uh, if, if somehow in her year, uh, bio, biology and uh, physics wasn't offered as honors. So she yeah, so she in the, the combination. So she actually had to write in and then uh, to the school and because of timetable matters and all that. Uh, it was offered previously, but it's a very heavy, uh, supposedly heavy curriculum. So she took two modules so far, uh, 
from NUS. Uh, yeah, but she was very lucky because it's all e modules, so she didn't have to go to the campus at all. Yeah, uh, for biology. So um, yeah, the depth uh, of what they learn. Uh, being a science background, I also took uh, chemistry, uh, honors, uh, no honors, but chemistry uh, bachelor. So um, the level that they study is uh, really beyond, way, way, way beyond uh, O levels and A levels and the in-depth for each topic and things like that is really, uh, they, they learn it in, how to say, um, in the truth itself. So, you know, there's no like a, a, a canvassing for, you know, uh, you understand it this way first, then after that you understand another way. And then uh, after that, you learn a little bit more. Oh, this way doesn't uh, this doesn't uh, happen all the time. You know, they kind of they straight away they learn uh, the the all the necessary concepts and the foundations, so that there's no need to relearn and relearn at a deeper level in that sense. But they just carry on learning more and more. And I think uh, that that really helps uh, in in her let them find out uh, what is the eventual thing that they like to study in depth. Uh, is that really the, and even if in depth there are many, many aspects of it, then they can actually already think about these things. They know there are certain strengths and, and uh, in certain aspects. Yeah, so I think it was a very good exposure all in all. And she had to like uh, decide what she wants and lobby for it. You know, it's not like, uh, it's not like, oh, I just see uh, not effort. Uh, so that's it, uh, you know. Yeah, so so this is the mentality of a lot a lot of uh, uh, education uh, system kids uh, where they say, oh, uh, the school don't offer law, so I don't take it. Yeah, so so I think uh, thinking about what you really want to study and then going for it, I think this, this is a really good uh, learning journey for them. And also in next time, when, what she wants to learn, what they want to explore, uh, they can carry on, you know, to, to, to go for uh, such uh, combinations that they like, yeah. Yeah, I understand your, your daughter has a most unusual combination doing uh, biology um, honors as well as physics honors. It's it's kind of like, you know, our, which other person in school uh, really does that. Um, I know I'm going to address something here, which maybe our out outreach team um, will be looking at. It says um, one of our parents, which was Kauza, who had said that she was guided by our parent alumni. I think she's referring to V2 on the DSA process. So you had somebody to talk to um, when you're trying to decide, you know, uh, whether or not your child should apply to NUS High and this parent is really hoping that um, they can be tagged on to some parent alumni for some form of uh, help. I think our outreach team will say that they are going to be sending out uh, DSA information to the all the primary schools and um, I believe that through that outreach process um, parents who are need to have questions answered can actually um, contact our outreach team you know um, I, I believe um, if an email address or something is given um, we're, we're sure that you know our each team are always there actively trying to uh, connect parents um, especially those who have a lot more uh, questions so um, hopefully I can leave that question now um, you know although they um, they, they may not have uh, very many questions or at least I haven't seen uh, new questions come out um, the point about leadership opportunities in the school um, it's it's not like a, a big school where um, no every child is uh, probably like uh, lobbying or fighting just to get that one opportunity um, our school is very small so I believe that uh, opportunities whether academic or otherwise are widespread and very available uh, we I believe your daughter is already in the junior student council would you like to share you know on uh, how did she choose to do that or how has it helped her Yes, Michelle. Well, she 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 was in the orientation in year one and was very impressed by the seniors who were organizing that uh, event. As I think one of the parents shared just now, they have very unique orientation and it is organized by these seniors. And I think she was really impressed. She wanted to join them in the house, of course, at the beginning as a house uh, rep. And then later on, I think in year uh, two, he was telling me how 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 more can I be kind of uh, get trained, you know, in the leadership training. I said, yeah, look into the council, you know, that that would be the student body to represent student in a sense. So I think she she tried very hard because she told me, oh, there's a lot of interview going on, selection and all those. But I think I think all, all in all, she she does uh, enjoy that part. 
it is pretty heavy in a sense of uh, they always have meeting and you know sometimes you have to say I got to finish my dinner early because uh, six o'clock is a meeting or eight o'clock is a meeting. But I think it's fine. Yeah, uh, actually now it's all online meeting la. But I think um, it, it does help her in a sense of uh, she will learn to be uh, seeing how things are organized. Uh, in a sense, you know, if you want to organize an event and also in how to be. Uh, relating to other people i mean relating to teacher as well as relating to your peers i think that's important so i think that kind of training uh will be good i'm not really sure whether she will go towards some community sort of thing but i, I hope that would be also be included in that but she's just in the junior council i think just get selected for this semester i think uh finally i think she, she was really looking forward to that yeah to, to try to have uh, she herself has uh, been looking at you know, hope, hopefully to have a more holistic sort of uh, all-rounded training. So besides the Olympic training that she has uh, was chosen for, she really wants to also participate in uh, CCA and be in, in the leadership position. I want to echo one point just now. Um, I think uh, we will talk about the depth, the, the depth of learning science. I just want to share one one point. I, I, I like to share this because I teach chemistry in uh, year one for for NES. Huh? So I, I used to have students, of course, when after I teaching, the students all come forward to ask questions. And I can actually identify and say, oh, are you from NUS High? Because the way they ask questions is different. I think I think that is a point which I like to share here. I think teaching teaching can be always you know uh, you, you follow the curriculum and you, you teach, but I think the integration part of it is important. So so you can then see that uh, students uh, from uh, NUS high school they 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 learn to integrate. Uh, and, and there's a lot of exposure. There's a lot of hands on for them. So I think they they do integrate and they don't they don't ask you a very plain questions like. Is this going to be included in the exam? You know, that very typical question that I'm afraid many of our level students has. So I, 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 I like to share this point because I thought this is uh, very telling in terms of the kind of uh, education and the mind training that our students has gone through in NS High. So I think, uh, yeah, I'll stop here. Uh, perhaps, yeah, Helena. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Wishong. I think that's very good. You know, th this question that's just popped up. Um, so Wishong, you've actually partially answered that already. Um, do they spend too much time on academic and nothing else? Wishong, you've already said the answer is no. But you know, I think, Councillor, if you would like to expand on that, because I think your son is quite um, involved in um, SDYC, which is the Model United Nations uh, program in our school. Would you like to share on that, please? Oh, he's very excited about the debate thing and uh, he was involved initially in year three and then he was invited by them to join again this year as uh, a part of like, you know, setting up and doing all those kind of things. And he's very, very, very excited. He's conducting meetings. He's having uh, talks about it. And um, uh, not only uh, not only that, but like, you know, right now I would say that he's quite chilled about all his work. So it's not that, you know, they are only academically doing things. They are everywhere uh, and that is and and they are enjoying it. So if if they are enjoying what they are doing, I think, you know, we shouldn't be worried too much. Uh, so I, I, I think I, I hope like, you know, that helps because um, I, I it, it, this gives also an opportunity to express themselves in various other fields besides science. And um, when it comes to presentations and um, a lot of project works uh, in in NUSI involves presentation. And I think, you know, all this MUN skills and debating skills really help and uh, it, it helps them to present themselves well. So I think it is it is all rounded, I would say. That's very good. Um, Council, that's very true. Presentation skills are very uh, strongly developed in our school simply because they do so much research. In fact, one of the uh, highlights is um, Research Congress, but really um, before any form of research presentation outside, I think I believe our students are actually asked to present to their English teachers. So if you can make an English language teacher understand your science research, then I think you've probably achieved something. Um, you know, I, I believe um, even Wishong would probably uh, attest to that, that um, your daughter is also into um, debate. Uh, do you see that as uh, something beneficial to her in a science school? 
Yes, yes. I think uh, you, you can't just learn science. Uh, there, there are two kinds of or, or extreme kind of student. My elder son is a kind who likes maths and likes physics and likes solving problems, but don't ask him to talk about it. You know, he, he, he really am immersed in that and he wants to do that in his own world. But I think uh, the daughter is a slightly different. She, she, can, she can be more uh, expressive. I think uh, that's the, uh, perhaps being a girl, I don't know. <laughs> so, so, so that's a different. And I think uh, the debate club is something that she really wants to join. Of course, again, CCA is a choice where she made for herself. Uh, was toying between dancing and uh, debate, and finally he, she chose this because she felt that it's important for her to 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 have that opportunity to express, even if you know you 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 like science, you still need to have a way to express it, and perhaps also the the way that I, I I've been teaching, <laughs> so that kind of influenced her a little bit. I do not know, but I think she 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 really enjoyed it. She has participated even in year one. She just joined debate, and then she was able to participate in that competition and take, really take part in, in that. Uh, I think uh, it, it, there is this very close bit of senior and junior students sharing. I think uh, in the club, for example, she would tell me a year four, year five student is uh, sharing with them how to do things. I mean, and then we say, hey, no coach on me. I say, yeah, you, you can have coach, but at the same time, you know, that senior is sharing it with the junior, which is actually very good. I think that you you learn a lot more when you learn to teach. So so that kind of uh, learning is is also part of the training as well. And I think that helps uh, a lot. So I, I'm looking forward for her to now start teaching the junior. And then I was we were telling her that way well, next year you're going to be senior high. Huh? Okay. So take your responsibility and do your bit <laughs> to to do do that kind of training. So I think that learn is also a learning itself. I think yeah. Thanks. That's very true, Wishong, because um, we know that um, the, the connection between seniors and juniors, simply because it's a six year program, there's really no barrier between a year one and a year six, you know, and, and they get to know each other, whether it's through interest groups, whether it's through CCAs, whether it's through even all these Olympiads. And it's very true that the seniors are actually the ones teaching ahead. Um, you know, simply because they have gone through this themselves and it's a, it's a school wide thing. It's, it's not just a special group just because I'm your friend, so I teach you. And uh, very often um, they have Discord chats, they have uh, WhatsApp chats, and then you find that somebody posts the question, whether you know that person or doesn't or don't know that person, um, somebody, another senior, somebody else will just come in with an answer. Sometimes teachers are even on those chats and then they'll, you know, it's, it's kind of like um, they're, they're seeing if, whether anybody has answered it correctly or not. But very much the connection between um, seniors and juniors is, is a very unique point um, about our school. Um, you know, this other point about um, your children um, spending uh, uh, time that's not just on academics, uh, Kirkun, you would probably like to share because both your children are with the school orchestra and your daughter is a concert master of the orchestra. Is there anything you'd like to say, you know, the amount of time they spend on the on the CCA, um, you know, uh, does it affect their schoolwork or does it complement um, their school life? Kirkun, yeah. Uh, for CCA, I'm, I'm very impressed too uh, by the limited amount of time that they spend on the CCAs and yet they can achieve a lot. Yeah, so so this is something that uh, I'm, I'm used to because uh, I'm also so inquire and uh, things like that. So we had to have lots of practice, you know, after hours, extra sessions, even to now many schools are doing that. Uh, for, but for their CCAs, uh, they are pretty much uh, stick to their Mondays and Fridays uh, after school. So the timing, the most is maybe extend a little bit, I think seven plus a bit. Yeah, so so they managed to, to really keep to that. And during the school holidays, um, they are really free. <laughs> that was something that I didn't expect. You know, <laughs> I was like, huh, you really don't have to go back to school uh, right at the beginning, but now I'm used to it. Lah. But so I have to plan programs for them actually uh, uh, during the school holidays because yeah, the, the thing about uh, the school is that uh, uh, the it's pretty intensive academically. Uh, it works like a university. So the the semester is like 10 weeks, uh, I mean uh, uh, six months, okay, less than six months. So many of them are half year long uh, modules and occasionally they have a year long modules. 
So the student actually have to absorb and be able to apply in a very short time. Yeah, so so that's the thing. And on top of that, they, they have to handle the CCA. So they also have a, a voluntary uh, community uh, uh, activities. She also organizes and uh, she's also the, she was the vice president of the music and art ambassador interest group as well. Uh, yeah, so she, she managed to uh, juggle all this, but again, uh, each day the time is stretched. Uh, maybe there are a lot of assignments, uh, homework, uh, these are, uh, it, is, it will be known when they are in there. Uh, it's uh, 11, uh, 2, 3, 5, 9, uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the deadline, okay? So expecting them to, uh, of course, knowing them, that they will try to make that deadline, uh, which is midnight. Uh. Okay, so so some they, they 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 will have to sacrifice a little bit of sleep. That that's for definite during the term time. But what I think is that intensive uh, uh, and yet effective. So it keep them very focused for that amount of time rather than drag 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 you know for six months long. Yeah, and then they learn what they need to learn and then they apply it. They 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 prove that they can you know handle the concepts and everything. Then they have pretty much time to do many other things actually. But uh, sleep uh, will be less, for sure. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I, I think sleep is also something that's very individual. I think my son, he he really needed his sleep when he was like in year one, year two, sorry, you know, chasing us out of the room at 9.30. But then um, as, as the years go on and their projects increase, I think, um, well, as teenagers, they're growing, they also are adapting and, and I leave him completely to do things on their own because um, I believe, you know, they, they handle things, you know, because that part stretches us to the next question, were all your research projects successful? So, you know, you're wondering, and um, parents will fear that why are our teenagers sleeping later and later? Um, Ritu, you may be able to share with us that, you know, some of the research projects, for example, your son also had taken part, has uh, math projects, has um, Singapore Young Physicists uh, Tournament, and those kind of projects go on for a long time. Um, can they always be successful? Ritu, would you like to share? Okay. Uh... So a research project, uh, actually it depends upon how you rate a research project as successful and not successful because in my view, even a negative result is success in a research project because it just says that this is something that you cannot do. Uh, you st uh, in a research, a person starts with a question and then you're trying to prove whether the, the question is correct or not correct. So any answer is a success for a research project. You cannot have a, uh, that's how I define a research project. There's nothing as unsuccessful research project. Uh, in terms of managing the time uh, for the various projects, uh, okay, uh, the school definitely has long hours, but then uh, it also has longer breaks in between. The kids get longer breaks in between the modules. Some days uh, the timetable might be packed, but some days the timetable is more uh, uh, relaxed. And then uh, there are days where they would get longer breaks. Sometimes uh, the breaks can be from two hours to two and a half hours. So the, the children in school uh, have a maturity level and especially when they grow up, grow in, uh, go as they progress in higher years, uh, they, are very, they get very good at managing their time at school. So for my son, he is, uh, he has learned to manage that time he gets in the school pretty well. So uh, he utilizes all the breaks that he gets in the school to finish as much work as possible and to even if they have to go and see uh, see their mentors to do the research projects. So they would try, the, the children would try to fit in the, they would try to plan their time in such a way that they uh, use the, the the break times for the for the research. Uh, uh, there are days when they have to stretch their uh, time and they have to take out that extra time to go and do the research. But then you know it's like some days some in their phases, right? As there uh, would be days where they are very very busy. So, and then there would be days when they are very, very relaxed. So I, I feel that it sort of balances things out because uh, a child cannot be relaxed all the time and a child cannot be busy all the time. 
So when the child is busy, they are busy. And when the child is, then they get time to relax. Once their research is over, they get time to relax. So for me, it is like seeing the bigger picture of things rather than you know just seeing that through their crunch phase, uh, they might be really busy. They have to spend a bit longer. They might be sleeping a bit less. They have to spend more time on their project. And then once a the project is over, they get the time to relax. So it is more like you know seeing the big, bigger picture of things rather than just focusing on one element. Yeah, when they are doing a research project, they definitely get busy. And but then that is the they want to do it. It is you know the, the in the in the school, the kids are motivated for. I asked my son this question that don't you get tired? He says, no, I love what I'm doing. I don't get tired. So definitely, if, you know, if a person is doing what they love to do, they don't get tired because they're enjoying the process. For us it, as parents, we might see, oh, they are sleeping late or, you know, they're just so busy. They're on the phone, they're on the laptop. They might be stressed, they might be tired, but they don't see it that way. They say, no, it's fun. I want to do this. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. So uh, they have a very different perspective and then they are so self-motivated and so, so driven that they don't find, they don't see the things the way that we probably as adults see it. They, for them, it is fun. So they don't find it stressful. They don't find it heavy. They don't find it as if they're sleeping less. They're just having fun. Yeah. Thanks. I, I, I hope it helps. Ritu, that was very wonderful because there's this question that was asked earlier. How do you parents support children studying in NUS high, especially during a crunch period like exams? But uh, my answer to that was that we don't have a crunch period called exams simply because um, work goes on all the time. Um, there are many different types of assessments. Uh, it's from practicals to uh, graded tasks to assignments and everything counts, at least everything from year three onwards. So there's, there's no pressure to say that you're going to like um, study like crazy in the last six months towards your A-levels or something. Um, everything adds up. So that regular work, which Ritu has already said, is actually um, one, of, uh, one of the most important things. And they're having fun, so there's no pressure to say that, you know, um, if, I, if, if, I, if I don't study for this very particular exam, that I, I'm going to do badly, you know, that it's going to be reflected. I think um, that takes the pressure off um, children, and I think it takes the pressure off parents as well. Hi. Oh, okay, yes. Um, yeah, I think we got cut off a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, like I, I, I... Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, but in any case, uh, maybe, okay, uh, you can put me on live, Marcy? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think uh, as, as Helena was sharing i think we all agree uh, i think when she was she left off was was really uh, echoing the, the 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 parents um sentiments uh, over here our own parents um that um sometimes we we see the children really backs out to the full but i think we hear from them very encouraging as a staff to hear from the parents um being so understanding that really actually the the the, the students want to push themselves um that extra mile themselves because they are really interested in what they're doing. They, they want to see how far they can go. Uh, that speaks quite a bit about the culture that we have in NUS High. Um, very encouraging once again to, to, to hear that from the parents. Um, yeah, I think we, we have come really actually almost to the end. Um, we actually overshot the time, but I think we really wanted to hear from the parents and very encouraging to, to see that uh, our own parents really are happy uh, with with what the the, the students the, the children are getting um, in NUS High School, um, I think uh, quite a few of the questions here were answered with regards to the platforms in which the students can actually explore beyond the classroom, not just uh, academically. Um, firstly, um, th there are many platforms to to uh, 
uh, explore not just in STEM but non-STEM areas as well. Secondly, I think some of the questions that were addressed was um, how special really is the, the curriculum here in terms of the STEM subjects and I think some of our parents did address that the rigour was far deeper. I think Prof Chin herself also can attest to, to really the way uh, our students um, answer questions. Uh, really not just finding out from the professors and the teachers about what is assessed in the exam per se but really wanting to learn the subject earnestly uh, for what it's worth uh, really uh, is uh, a test to, to really what the, the students are, are getting in the school in terms of what they actually um, are taught to learn um, and the attitudes in which they are learning in, in, the, in the classrooms. Yeah, so um, also uh, one other thing that I think uh, the parents have already addressed uh, will be um, really uh, in terms of the, I think one, one very pressing question would be the DSA applications, right? So um, I think in regards to DSA application, um, well, it really uh, differ, it really varies year on year, the cohort that applies, uh, right? So, so um, but what I think uh, we have learned from the earlier student panel really is that the, stu the questions that are asked will really probe about the, um, the student's passion as well as um, their analytical and, and logical thinking abilities, right? So this, uh, this is one thing as well. Um, if though you have any further questions, I think we will end the session at this point of time. But if you have any further questions, uh, really, I think I'm going to share a slide over here. You can address it to newton at highschool.nus.edu.sg. OK, that's the email address over there. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, I think we'll end the session now. Thank you all uh, to the attendees, the parents and the students who are in this channel.